What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Amateur Pro Home Chef Nathaniel Levinson, coming at you with another tier list. I'm making this as I'm preparing to leave for California to visit my brother and then to go to a wedding in Tucson. So pray for me. I might not make it back because it's going to be hot. Uh, but also, I apologize uh, for the kind of hasty nature of this video. And so the quality might be a slightly lower than you know, what we usually do. I do apologize for that. I'm leaving the background off because it was kind of like blurring and, and I don't think it was good. So you get to see... Uh, where I sit in front of my computer. Um, so, but yeah, uh, hopefully the audio quality is okay. I'm coming off of a cold, so my voice is a little strained too, but uh, that's never stopped me from talking before. So today's tier list, we're going to be talking about condiments. Now, uh, condiment is somewhat of a, of a loose term, but generally it refers to something that you would apply to your food, um, something that would be on the table or be given to you for you to apply to your food in a manner, the amount and that you want to. So like ketchup and mustard and mayonnaise are the three you know, typical condiments where it's like those don't necessarily have to be added to the food, but you can if you want to. And they're like traditional where, oh, if you have fries, a lot of people will eat them with ketchup. So it's that sort of thing. A condiment is it's, it's like a little th extra thing you add to your food that is totally optional and that is generally up to personal preference in terms of what and the amount. Okay, so... Uh, We've got our uh, rankings where S tier is applied liberally to everything. A, always a good option. B, perfect in the right context. C, usually outclass. And D, not for me, thanks. I don't know if any of these are going to go in the D tier, but um, there are definitely some things that will show up in other tier lists that I'll do. So there are a couple of hot sauces in here. There are a couple of salad dressings in here. And just because I think most people would consider these as condiments in general. Um, so you might see some repeats on here. And they might be different in those tiers because uh, here I'm thinking about them as condiments. And there I'll be thinking about them in, in terms of their class of hot sauce or salad dressing in this case, right? Uh, so let's start off with, um, these are not in any order, but barbecue sauce. Now barbecue sauce, barbecue sauce is a really broad term and there are, are a lot of obviously different styles of barbecue sauce. Um, you've got your, your thick and smoky and Kansas City style, the sweeter kind, um, Carolina mustard sauce, um, the more vinegary stuff uh, uh, that you find in, uh, in uh, Northern Carolina and South Carolina. Um, and I'm going to be honest, I like all of them. I think they're all delicious. I think barbecue sauce is just an S tier. Um, find a style you like, and it's good on pretty much any meat you will ever make. Barbecue sauce is amazing. A little bit on a sandwich, a little bit on anything, it's good. Now, and barbecue sauce is funny because it's kind of hard to make good barbecue sauce on your own. It's definitely doable, but making like a really banging barbecue sauce is not simple. It's, it's more complex than just throwing some stuff in a blender and blending it. Um, but barbecue sauce, top tier. Uh, my personal favorite, I, I love the Carolina mustard, Carolina style mustardy sauce because uh, it's, it's tartar and tangier. Uh, I definitely moved away. I used to love the, the sweet style, kind of the Sunny's sweet barbecue sauce style. I moved away from that a little bit because it's a little too sweet for me now. But generally, I think with the smokiness, sweet and smoky go really well together. So it's still a good option. Uh, chimichurri sauce. Now, for those of you who don't know, chimichurri, Chimichurri, it's hard to say. It's got two R's, so you got a rrr, rrr, yeah, if you've ever taken Spanish. Single R, rrr, double R, rrr, right? I know I'm right. So all you native Spanish speakers who are assuredly watching this video, you know what I'm talking about. But chimichurri is an Argentine-specific uh, thing. It's, it's basically chopped up herbs and onion and garlic uh, mixed with oil. And you apply it to, well, uh, in Argentina, they, they primarily eat beef. Is they grow a lot of they grow a lot of cattle. You know, cow, cows grow on trees in Argentina. You can tell I'm coming off of sickness. My head's like pff, gone. Um, typically applied to beef because they raise a lot of cattle in Argentina. Argentina is famed for its beef. Um, and chimichurri is just real good. Chimichurri is just another level of transcendence when it comes to food. It goes good on everything. I guess it really is. It's it's it really is simplicity. It's herbs and garlic and onion with all of like good olive oil <laughs> you really can't go wrong so uh, i'm definitely gonna do an episode where we make our own jimmy jewelry and maybe do a flank steak like grill a flank steak or something like that that's that's gonna happen that's on my to-do list um so we'll go we'll talk more about that but if you've never had jimmy jewelry before um go find a place that serves it it is phenomenal uh dijon mustard now dijon mustard is different from uh traditional yellow mustard um so mustard is just you grind up well mustard seeds right and it's it's in a in, in, in an acidic liquid um so typical yellow mustard will use um like a, a white vinegar or sometimes apple cider vinegar um generally the better mustard you get the 
better vinegar is used because the vinegar is a, is a large component and so it will make a difference and you have yellow mustard and brown mustard and there's a lot mustard is actually a much more complex condiment than i think a lot of people give it credit for um, but i'm just kind of broadly divided into two major categories um, the yellow style which is just kind of mustard and vinegar mustard seeds and vinegar and then the dijon style which is mustard and, and wine vinegar which is uh, or, or even just some like white wine so it's a little bit different um Dijon's are generally milder and I forgot to put honey mustard on here which was I was a fool I was a fool but it's okay um so I'll, I'll just talk about honey mustard so mustard um I think yellow mustard is perfect in the right context yellow mustard tends to be I think a bit overpowering but it's really good it's really good for for certain applications um I like dipping my pretzels in it like a pretzel with a good really sharp mustard I think is awesome um but when it comes to like your everyday mustard like it kind of goes with everything i think like a good solid dijon mustard it's like a little milder a little more complex in flavor i think that's good now when it comes to honey mustard i'm just gonna say honey mustard can, can go anywhere from s tier to d tier depending on who makes it um honey mustard or hasi masi as we like to call it uh really depends on the blend the ratio of honey to mustard i like more mustard like a little tangy i like a lot of tangy with a little bit of sweet very disappointed when I get a lot of sweet little tang because that tends to just be like, oh, I'm just drizzling honey on things, which I, honey, you can arguably consider a condiment, but for the purposes of this video, I'm going to ignore it. Um, so there might be some holes, and if there are, let me know, and I can update this tier list so that I can I can add things I forgot, and maybe like, way in the future when I'm looking back, redo this video, but I'm not going to do that now. Um, I'm going to skip this for now, and let's let's do um, ketchup. Ketchup is, ketchup's the C tier, and and here's why. Um, I think ketchup is best when it's mixed with other condiments. Um, for instance, fry sauce. Fry sauce, which we made, is just good. Better than mustard, right? Fry sauce is the, like, the right mix of mustard and mayonnaise and ketchup and pickles and Worcestershire and seasoning, and it just like elevates it above. It's just better. It's better, better than all of those. And don't buy, buy fry sauce. Like Make your own, because then you can adjust the ratio and get exactly the amount of sweet, tang, creamy that you want. Um, but but ketchup is just maybe just not having it's ketchup is ketchup it's 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 kind of very boring and, and and if you love ketchup hey you love ketchup and in certain contexts i like it too but it's kind of one note it's it's not complex at all i find it it's usually too sweet um but it, it's good when you when it's used properly it can be good but generally i'm not reaching for ketchup on almost anything almost anything i'm skipping the ketchup um if you mix ketchup with the next condiment this is gochujang sauce and now this is a korean condiment you may not have heard of it i'm going to encourage you to go find some i think this condiment is fantastic i don't know if i put it up at s tier um because it's a bit of an acquired taste it's kind of like a fermented pepper thing it, it it's it kind of is like spicy ketchup um and it's really good. And honestly, you mix gochujang with ketchup, and that is really good for dipping fries in. Really good. Um, but it's this it's this thick, it's mildly spicy. It's not way off the heat scale, but it is spicy. So if you're not a fan of spicy, you know, avoid this. Um, but it's got some good funk to it, not in like an unpleasant way, but in kind of like a like a kimchi sauerkraut way. It's not tangy though. Um, it's kind of hard to describe. It's it's pretty unique. It's very, very good though, and it mixes well with a lot of other condiments. So gochujang, I think is it's a sleeper hit um if you've never tried gochujang and if you like spicy things i would definitely recommend you pick it up and start using like a little bit on your sandwiches on your burgers it's gochujang on a hot dog oh it's really good um this is harissa harissa is a middle eastern um pepper paste sort of thing um and it can go anywhere from mild to hot uh, that's one I put in B tier. Uh, if you use it right, it's really, really good. One of the best things to do with it is honestly to just mix to mix harissa with good creamy plain yogurt, and you get this marvelous dipping sauce, um, like equal parts. And of course, you can obviously adjust the ratios depending on how spicy or how peppery or how creamy you want it. But just super simple harissa yogurt, blend them, magic. It's so good. It's fantastic. Um, good for dipping a whole lot of things in. Um, basically, any grilled meats. All right, Heinz 57. Um, Heinz 57 is kind of a... And I picked this because this is just a condiment that I remember having. Um, Heinz 57 is actually not bad for dipping. It's kind of like a tangy... It's not quite a barbecue sauce. It's... I don't know what you would call it. 
but it's um it's it's tangy and and a little tangy a little sweet so maybe it is like a barbecue sauce but um i remember enjoying it but i'm gonna say it's generally you want to either mix your own kind of mixtures or, or get like a real good barbecue sauce hoisin sauce hoisin sauce is a sweet uh I believe it's plum-based sauce that's used a lot in Vietnamese cooking, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, sometimes, I apologize, but sometimes I get um, my Southeast Asian countries mixed up when it comes to which uh, thing goes with which country. Um, but I believe hoisin is primarily used in Vietnamese cooking. I love it. Um, it is very sweet. Anytime you're doing a stir-fry, put a little bit of this in. Um, it, it, I, I put it in B-tier, even though I love it. I put it in B-tier because... I haven't really found good uses for it outside of um, Southeast Asian style cooking. Um, so if you have suggestions, I would love to know um, how can you incorporate this? Maybe mix it with a little, like a little barbecue sauce, like a who? Yeah. So I, 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 this is one where I'd like to explore it in, in broader contexts. Um, horseradish. Horseradish is. I feel like a lot of these are going to go in B, but horseradish is. Um, Definitely an acquired taste. It's so it's different from it's a spicy, but it's it's the mustard. So mustard and horseradish and wasabi all have um, um, compounds that sulfurous compounds that kind of uh, vaporize. They're volatile, so you feel it in your sinuses rather than capsaicin, which sits on your tongue. Um, so that's the main difference between those two spices. They do this kind of the same thing where they tell your body heat, heat like they, they, get, they set off heat fire alarms uh, in your brain. But capsaicin sits on your tongue because it's, it's oily and, and dense, whereas um, the compounds in mustard and sulfur are, are volatile, and so they, they go up into your sinuses as you breathe them in. Um, horseradish, if you get it fresh, it's like really nice, but it's, um, and it's not <laughs> hard to find fresh. The thing is, <laughs> it's kind of fun. Uh, you go to a grocery store that sells fresh horseradish, and they're these giant honking, like two foot long, clubs and you're like where did this come from it's like it looks like a horse's leg you're just like you could beat someone to death with a horseradish a piece of horseradish i don't recommend you doing that i'm not for violence like but you could you could you could break someone's car with like if you were, if someone was driving at you at full speed and you just hammered down with a, a piece of horseradish like i think you'd win i don't again i don't advise trying this but um you could probably knock a, a ball out of out of Fenway Park with a piece of horseradish. These things are chonky. Um but it's really good. It's it, it is kind of fresh horseradish definitely is more complex than than typically the stuff you'll get in the store um where it is just that spiciness. This is one where you want to use very very sparingly, like a little bit, a little bit. Um but it really does provide a nice um really refreshing heat that goes away quickly that really clears the sinuses and that cuts through any kind of uh oiliness or fattiness so it's a really good accompaniment to uh rich heavy foods uh like steaks or lamb um but this is one where i would definitely recommend you ease into it um because it can yeah uh so if you ever taken passover um trying to eat horseradish <laughs> on just a little bit of matzah <laughs> you really get it punches you. It feels like someone's punching the, the top of your, uh, the back of your nose. It's uh, pretty intense. Um, but it does go away quickly. Not for everyone, though. That's why I'm putting in, in B tier. Hummus. Uh, I'm going to put hummus as an S tier, and I'm not biased. Um, hummus. Good hummus is just one of the best things. Just one of the best things. Like, not even, uh, you know, people get a little roasted red pepper hummus and, you know, jalapeno hummus and this hummus and that hummus. And if you just make really good hummus, you can put that on anything. Now, I mean, it generally, I, I, this is in condiments because, you know, you can put it on a pita, you can put it on a sandwich, you can put it on a burger. Um, it's really good. But, I mean, really good hummus, probably just eat by itself with a little bit of pita bread. Um, people eat it on carrot sticks, but. That's like wet and wet. That's why I think it's good with pita bread because you have the contrast of the dry, the dry, chewy bread with the soft, wet hummus. And on the carrot stick, it's like the wet, crunchy carrot with the wet, soft hummus, and it's all wet. And I'm like, I also just don't like carrots, but that's just me. Um, I'm sorry if I'm trailing off. Hopefully the audio comes through clearly. All right, next one. Kimchi. Okay, kimchi. Kimchi is uh, 
gonna put in A. And you might see, oh, I'm, I'm a little biased towards uh, towards Korean food. Um, kimchi is like a spicy Korean pickle. Okay, it's basically uh, cabbage, napa cabbage, I believe. Uh, generally, uh, you can basically make anything into kimchi, right? You can do kimchi carrots and kimchi radishes and you know, all these things. It's just a style of uh, preparation where you basically rub these things down with uh, a, a pepper mixture and then they ferment. It's really mild. Um, I mean, you can get anywhere from, you can get really spicy stuff, but generally you're going to get like pretty mild uh, and it's just really good. It goes well with just about everything. Obviously, um, if you've ever gone to like a Korean barbecue, it's kind of, you know, you got your meat and your rice and then all these little side dishes and kimchi is one of the ma major little side dishes. Um, but this, this is, a, it's, it's like refreshing and cooling. So it goes well with, again, stuff that's rich, that's oily, that's hot. Um, so yeah, I would recommend you try kimchi uh, in more than one context. It's really good on a burger, actually really good on a burger and provides a nice crunch. Um, malt vinegar. Malt vinegar is, it's a fish and chips thing, right? It's a fish and chips thing, and um, it's definitely good for, again, you really want salty, sour, vinegary things with the company really well, um, heavy, rich, fatty things. So like fried foods, these are fantastic for. So uh, French fries, people like to put on, put on French fries, people like to put it on um, uh, fried fish, uh, and things like that. Um, which we'll do a fish and chips at some point. We've already done French fries, but we'll do we'll do fried fish at some point. It's it's uh, like a nice beer batter. Um, but this is really perfect for that. It, it just it adds a nice tang, and it's the 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 nice thing about malt vinegar is um, it has a very distinct flavor that's not unpleasant, right? Sometimes when you say, "Oh, it has a very distinct flavor," you're like, because it tastes bad. But this has you can tell it tastes like malt vinegar, kind of a well, it's malt. If you ever had a malt. Um, which malt, malt itself tends to be divisive where some people say, well, it's delicious. And some people say, well, it tastes like dog food. Um, I personally like malt, but I, I understand why people don't. It is a very grainy, um, farm reminiscent taste experience. So I totally get why people don't like it, but I personally love it. Um, what else? Uh, that's all I have to say about malt vinegar, right? It's, it's, Good with fried foods. Uh, mayonnaise, this, okay, this might be my most controversial thing I've ever said on Kitchen Chemist because I know, I know some people absolutely loathe this condiment. Mayonnaise is S tier. And there are a lot of reasons why. Um, it's, first of all, I just, I, I, I think good mayonnaise tastes great. Now, I have Hellman's here. I honestly, if I go store bought, I, I prefer Duke's. I think Duke's is, is better. Um, you can make your own, and it's a little bit of a hassle. We'll we'll do it at some point. We'll make our own mayonnaise, and I'll show you. I'll show you how. But it's a little bit of a hassle. But it it actually is a tremendous difference in flavor when you make your own mayonnaise. Um, like most things are when you make your own, it's a tremendous dish, difference in flavor. But uh, mayonnaise is is really good. I, I like dipping. I'm. It's. A, I think it's a Dutch thing. Dipping your fries in mayonnaise. I'm all about that. Um, but the other thing, the other reason that mayonnaise goes in S tier is that. Uh, mayonnaise is the backbone of like ninety percent of the other condiments. It's in fry sauce. It's in uh, honey mustard. It's in ranch dressing. It's in it's in a lot of things. Mayonnaise is in a lot of things. Uh, basically, like Chick Fil A sauce and and cookout sauce and all the all the fast food ones. It's the backbone of everything. So even if you don't think you like mayonnaise, there's probably something you enjoy that has mayonnaise in it. And for that reason, I'm going to put it up at, at, at the S tier. <laughs> Uh, speaking of which, ranch dressing. Ranch dressing for me, um, I used to love it. I don't dislike it, but I do find I there are usually things I like more than it. Um, again, this one might be controversial because a lot of people really love ranch dressing, uh, and, and I do. I do like it, but when I think about ranch dressing, like when do I get ranch dressing? Um, I get it when I eat wings, right? But I prefer blue cheese. I'm one of the weirdos that likes blue cheese. So for me, yeah, for me, uh, ranch is usually not my go-to. I usually go for something else. Pickle relish. Pickle relish. Pickle relish I'm not a huge fan of. I'm actually going to put it. Sweet relish I'm actually going to put in the not for me, thanks. I think in certain places it, it can be, I think it's okay on a dog. It's okay in tuna salad. But usually 
I like to just chop up my own pickles because usually the usually the relish the pickles they use for pickle relish is usually not that good. So usually I like to just either make my own pickles or use some pickles that I know are really good, and dice those up and and put them in there. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna put those. Uh, pickle relish is not for me, but I you know I totally get why people like it. Uh, sambal olek. So sambal is just it's like a it's just a, a chili paste. It's very very common again in in Southeast Asian cooking. Um, so sambal olek is perfect in the right context. This is another one where you mix it with a little bit of yogurt and you got a great dipping sauce. Although I think I prefer harissa. Harissa's got a little more uh, smoky, earthy flavor to it, um, whereas sambal is kind of just like bright chili flavor, which is really good. Um, add it to a little bit of stir fry. Um, any, anything, any, and this what's, what's great about this is it has a pretty neutral flavor profile. So you can, if you want to just kick up the heat just a little bit, it's not super spicy, but it is spicy. And you can also get one that has uh, a version of it that has garlic in it as well. So garlic chili paste. Um, if you just want to kick the heat up on basically anything, you can just add a spoonful of this, and it, it'll kick up the heat. Add a little bit of you know a little bit of that pepper profile, but not overtake anything. So it doesn't have an overbearing flavor. It has like a nice mild flavor. But it is, it's weird to say, it has a nice mild, it has a, it has a low key flavor, but it, it provides a nice punch of heat, if that makes sense. Sauerkraut. <sighs> okay, not for me. Uh, sauerkraut is pickled cabbage. It's a German thing. It's very commonly found on Rubens uh, and uh, Bratwurst. I just find it bland. I don't know. I don't, I'm not a huge fan of sauerkraut. And I love, I love me a corned beef sandwich. I really do. Um, but yeah, I'd rather just have some pickles. Sauerkraut is just, to me, is they're just inferior pickles. I, I'm not not a huge fan. Not a huge fan. I'm going to put sour cream down there too. Sour cream, I use it sometimes in cooking. Like I'm cooking, you know, sometimes if you're doing baked goods, you'll put sour cream in there because it, it provides fat and and, uh, and density and some other things. But man, I really just find, I, I really just not a huge fan of sour cream. Uh, by itself yeah uh I, I totally see its utility in calming down spicy things and providing uh, like cool creaminess to for background of, of of other things i see the contrast it provides um but I, I i don't know i think i prefer lighter milder things i don't know i'm just not a huge fan of sour cream soy sauce uh i'm just gonna put it in a tier should go in s tier but you know there are some places where you don't want to use soy sauce because soy sauce is a very strong flavor right it's the soy sauce flavor it is very strong anything you season with soy sauce will taste like it was seasoned with soy sauce so it is something that you may not want to use on everything but i do think you can use it in more things than you would right again i don't think soy sauce should be confined to southeast asian cooking um, i think it's got broad applications it provides it provides a lot of salt it provides a lot of that umami that you're really looking for so i think it's great in marinades and other things um and it will, again, if you're not careful with it, it will tend towards a teriyaki style flavor, which is good, right? But if you're not going for that, be careful with it. And there's a ton of different kinds of soy sauce. If you want a more mild flavor, look for dark soy sauce, which is a soy sauce that's been simmered down. It's less salty. It's got a more pronounced flavor. Um, it's one of my favorite things to cook with. Uh, it's more of a Chinese thing than a, a Kikumen is a Japanese brand. So... Um, but dark soy sauce is is more of a Chinese thing than a, a Japanese thing. Um, but soy sauce is just really good, really good. Um, sriracha. So I might get I might take some heat for this as well. Uh, sriracha is a I, I feel is usually outclassed. I I don't think it's bad. I definitely got sriracha fatigue because like everybody puts sriracha on everything. I do think it is a really good balance of not too spicy and very flavorful so it's not overtly hot it is very flavorful it does have a unique flavor so you can like tell it's sriracha but i think i really think i just suffered from fatigue it was just on everything all the time and i kind of just got sick of it um so i well i think it's good most other hot sauces i prefer especially because most other hot sauces tend to be more vinegary and i like that a little bit more in my hot sauces um but for me I don't usually put sriracha on most things. Um, so that's my personal thing. A1 steak sauce. A1 steak sauce. Um, if you make a really good steak, you should not need to put sauce on it. So you know what? I'm even going to put this down here. I don't see the purpose of steak sauce. The purpose of steak sauce is to cover up the offense 
of a, of a steak that you made poorly. So if you're making a good steak, there is no reason for you to ever use steak sauce. Now I will say, and I don't think they make it anymore. There was a version of A1 that was like um, roasted garlic A1 that was really good. It balanced the really sharp tanginess of A1 with really sweet garlic flavor, which was really good. I don't think they make it anymore. I'm not a huge fan of traditional A1. I think the peppercorn one is just way too much. It just it it's too bold of a flavor. I think it's better served on barbecue than it is on steak. It's just too bold of a flavor. It kind of overwhelms anything you're eating. Um, so I actually think it's good on chicken because chicken, you know, chicken doesn't taste like much. So I think it's fine on chicken. But honestly, I should never see you put this on your steak. I mean, again, it's your steak. You can eat it how you want, but I don't think you should need it on your steak because when you're eating a really good steak, you want to taste the beef, and I don't think A1 allows you to do that. So for that reason, A1, not for me, thanks. Sweet chili sauce, um, I'm going to say it's good in the right context. Usually I find this is, you got to find a good one, right? Because sometimes it's just too sweet, and it's just, look for one that doesn't have high fructose corn syrup in it. Um, I'm not like a huge person who rails against high fructose corn syrup. Um, I, don't, I honestly don't care. I drink regular Coke, it's just fine, right? Um, but there are certain things where you look, and if you see high fructose corn syrup, you should get the one that doesn't have that because that indicates that's a lower quality product. Um, so while I don't think consuming high fructose corn syrup is an issue, I do think sometimes in certain contexts, um, one of them being condiments, it indicates a lower quality product. So you do generally want to avoid things that have high fructose corn syrup if you're looking for high quality. Um, again, that's not to say that everything that has corn syrup in it is bad. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is generally, general rule of thumb, high fructose corn syrup is an indication of large scale mass production and generally that indicates lower quality. But I, I, again, well, taste is subjective. So if you like the stuff, you buy it, right? So um, I realized, I, again, condiment is like a really wide, broad word. I looked up a list and I tried to pick some that, that I you know, seemed reasonable. So obviously you can see uh, how my cuisine tastes are slanted <laughs> towards, uh, towards uh, Asian cuisine. Um, because I, I find that is you know very flavorful, so especially in the condiments. Um, but now yeah, let me know what uh, what you guys think. Where would you place condiments? What other condiments am I missing? I can obviously update the list. Um, so yeah, uh, this has been your boy, amateur pro home chef Nathaniel Levinson. Hoping I get better. I'll see you in the next video.